Tell him good morning, Dave. Well, you know, I'm just waking up here talking to the studio. <laughs> made it, Josh made it again. Again. This is the story of my life now. <laughs> Deadlines. Deadlines. <laughs> Welcome to the third floor. Yes. How's the audio? So I got, oh, my mic is a bit twisted here. All right. This is I, uh, Dave's mic speaking. One, two, three. Are we okay? I'm yeah. going to bring you up just a little bit. Okay. Testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. I remember speaking out a bit. Okay. How's your mic? My mic's fine. I'm going to, I've got you maxed. And uh, people would, audio is pretty bad. Double audio, I think. Dave is echoey and dim. The double microphone thing. Really? Yeah. Well, the other day we just fine. Yeah. We um, then, let's one? kill mine and I'll, because I'm louder than you are. So I will take okay. mine just down to zero. And then should we leave this here or move it somewhere between us? I'll leave it there. Leave it there for now at least. All right. I'm taking mine off. I just dropped the level all the way. Okay. So now I'll just talk a little bit louder. You'll be able to hear me. <laughs> For whose benefit? So okay, well, okay. nobody's really. But... <laughs> all right, all right. It's printing today, and the print we're going to be working on is this is perhaps a little bit unexpected to everybody. Hold on. Now, Karen says now there's no audio, but we've got. I mean, I'm seeing. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, this is the no mic here. Zero. One, can I tap it to make sure it's this mic okay, that we're doing? Okay. Right. okay. I'm hearing Dave sounds better, but it's quiet. Now well, that's you, nothing new. I've right. got you maxed. Okay. Well, the mic is right there. Yeah. So. The only difference is we're on an extender cable, so the cable length is longer than normal. Can I make sure we're plugged in tightly? Okay. Yeah, we're, we're good. So oh, there is another way for the, it could be that we're turned down on the Ederol interface when I moved it one sec. Okay. That could be. I'll show you what to do here, John Sam. It's this wheel, and if you max that wheel, that's where we get hiss, hiss, hiss. So right. we've got to use that wheel. Okay. I have no idea where it is in position. Yeah, it's only it this way it maxes it, but that way it puts a lot of the hiss into the string. Okay, give me a levels. Yeah, you can't tell, so it's up to them to. How are we looking at things? Oh, that just maxed it. Okay. That, that knocking. Okay, but at least we know where it is, though. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it. Okay, Dave is better. That's all that's important. <laughs> The person has to hear me is you. I gotta get some paste. We gotta get some paste. It's right here. Steel. Didn't this desk used to be over there? Huh? Did, did this desk get turned around? This desk mean what? This, this desk here. Did, no, wasn't no, this against the wall? No, 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 no. no. It's always been like that. Yeah. There's only one against the wall, the one behind you, Super Sans. It's a left handed setup. Okay. No, I haven't changed those since we built this place, however many years ago it was. Yeah, I'm not really mumbling, I'm just not... Uh, oh, who's that printing with you to? Yes, we should introduce. This is Ishikawa-san, long-time printer here, more than 10 years. Here's your camera, Ishikawa-san, that's the... <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, today she's printing a key block which means going by the rules of any normal printing workshop is when someone's printing a key block, the rule is we pretty much leave them alone. And the reason is simple. Key blocks are done with not a super saturated block. They're done with a block that's just got a film of pigment on it. And if you interrupt them for a minute, if they talk to you or if they take a phone call, one minute goes by, two minutes go by, the block dries out and they've got to throw some water on it, get back to it, and the flow and the smoothness of the imagery is completely broken. In the old days, when it was uh, mukuita, when they weren't plywood blocks, it was even more critical. Because when you do your key block, you start with a block of a certain size, but 50 prints later, 100 prints later, 200 prints later, that block has expanded. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, little by little by little, with every single sheet of paper that goes on top of it. So you want to do nothing 
that will interrupt the rhythm of that person's work. They get to the end of the day or the session and they've got 100 sheets of paper, 200 sheets of paper, which are all actually, theoretically, different in size by the same amount. So you want that work to go just as smoothly and as uninterrupted as possible. So today we're going to talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of her. But we're, but we're not going to interrupt her and say, Ishikawa-san, can you show me something? Because she's not going to interrupt her work. The blocks we're using here are quite small. They're not going to warp. That part of it is not affected. But the dryness is. It's a really dry, beautiful blue sky day here in Asakusa. And if she took some, takes a break for one minute, that block yep. very much dries out. So it's like a child today. Seen but not heard. <laughs> Crafter guy says, even my dog's barking throws off my flow. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit too sensitive. Dave, well, Dave is going to be sitting chatting while he does this, but uh, yeah. Am I on camera? I can't see anything here, so it's up to you to uh, I'm, uh, keep I'm, me. I'm waiting for uh, something to happen. Okay. <laughs> waiting, for, waiting for a meaningful comment. Okay. Uh, we're, uh, no, I mean, other uh, visible the view here. Am I, am I in the right place doing the yeah, right no, thing? We're, okay, we're okay. perfect. Because I can't see it at all. Today, so. Yeah, I think uh, uh, what I'm going to do is reduce the just by a little bit street cam and the wide cam so that we're a little less covered on. of pigment and they're getting uh, blown away. Blown off, yeah. like a it. Uh, when I get into deep concentration mode, anything can throw me off my game. That's also a factor. Uh, that sounds like a contradiction. When you're in deep contradic concentration mode, you wouldn't notice anything else. Isn't there a contradiction there? Well, it's certainly seen that. Way. That block looks pretty empty to me. So this is, is indeed empty. I was going to start the stream by saying we have good news and bad news today. The good news is we're going to have a fairly rare printing stream. The bad news is <laughs> we're going to print a 100% completely flat blank block. Bingo. Normally we start with the key block, which would be this one. I'm a, I'm a, I can't I'm sure if I move just a little bit. That's good. That's better. Those are in the no known us. The Hokusai series we're doing, this is the second print, the one we published back in March. We need more copies. I know son warned me about this weeks ago. She said she needed more copies. The printer schedule to do it is currently overseas. Her family had a medical emergency and about 10 days ago, choop, over she went and she won't be back for a few more weeks. We're having medical emergencies actually left and right in the team here. You know, I heard that Talon sounds back now actually from, from, from England, from Wales. Anyway, long story short, she of course had to disappear straight away, so it's over to me to do this. Key block would normally come first, but this one is so delicate, so many incredibly tiny fine lines, we need two things to happen. One is we needed to calendar the paper, which I did last night. The paper went into the press before I moistened it yesterday afternoon. And today, as a second step in helping calendar it, I'm going to print a bare, blank, flat block with the tiniest, tiniest tint of gray on there. So it's not going to be really awfully all that interesting, but it's part of the job. It's part of what we do. I've got my color sample to match. It's going to be mostly paste. And is this visible, I guess, John, over there? That is visible and then the tiniest uptick of color. And 
actually this isn't really critical as long as I don't get it too dark so the point it would blot out things later this is pretty much invisible in the finished print so if I don't get it quite exactly right at this point it's not super critical the main point about this one is to simply to get the paper as flat and as smooth as possible procedure yesterday in middle afternoon I pressed it all late afternoon I moistened it and before I went to bed I came back and restacked it and re-moistened it again so it should be pretty close to what we want here It's a normal. These are called marubake. Maru is round. They're not round, but they're rounder than the traditional brushes that came before them, which were the vertical style with a handle. I don't have one in front of me at the moment right now, but I never like, like a makeup brush. Kind of thing. What would you and I know about makeup brushes? I've seen them. Okay, <laughs> you're a step ahead of me. <laughs> The vertical ones, which are usually called uh, tebake, now they're called hangabake, hanga brushes, but they were called tebake, a vertical stick with, with stuff at the bottom. Well, here's a, here's a miniature version of something like that. The vertical handle with stuff at the bottom. And throughout the pre-Meiji era, that's pretty much all you had, big, big fat ones. Then somewhere we're told in and around Meiji, Meiji maybe, I really don't know, there's no chapter and verse, they started using, they must have got shoe brushes or something from the yeah. West or something to get the idea. And somebody must have tried it. Hey, hey what do you think about those Western yeah, that, brushes? Let's try it. And it turned out yeah, that, looks like you that they things. actually work, you know. So the big change happened somewhere, whatever, early 20th century, I don't know. First time chatter says, I know Dave from YouTube and was surprised to see him streaming on Twitch. Love your work. Thank you, sir. For the sure. Leonidas Thank you. Umbra. Hmm? Leonidas Umbra is the name. Sounds European. Who should be ready to go to bed? I don't know. There's our image, and this is all we're going to see today a straight, flat. And just the, the retention of detail in that just floors me. Detail? Detail. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. The edges are so crisp. I'm just waking up here, John. <laughs> That's right. It's Saturday. Dave didn't swim this morning to wake up. I haven't had a swim that for three days. It's been holiday. Wednesday, oh, Thursday, geez. Friday, and Saturday, Sunday, the sports center is closed. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well. I, my, whole, my pass doesn't work on holidays. It's a normal weekday pass. So I'm, I'm in uh, withdrawal here. Oh. Took a shower. Tried to swim in the shower this morning. <laughs> Which reminds me, what have you been up to, sir? I haven't seen you for a few days. What have you seen? Where have you been? I uh, have been to, let's see, Kyosumi Teian. Uh, spent a good solid day there walking around. That's the park at the eastern bank of the Kiyosumi Bridge. Kiyosubashi, so? I believe so. Yeah. Oh. And uh, let's see, I went up to Omiya, to the phone site. Oh, that's right. You started talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they were discuss, got a joke. Discuss on yeah. She knows the place. The show? Okay. They were having their uh, annual festival. You mean displays and... Yeah, it was more a street fair than anything else. It was nice to walk around. And I, uh, I got to meet one of the other admins of the Japan Travel Group that I helped run. Oh, Soka. I, I've known her for 10 plus years online, but had never met her before. 
and uh, that was wonderful, very nice lady. And then uh, yesterday, I walked all over, geez, where, a number of places, not yesterday, the day before, uh, with Kit Nagamura. Oh, you mentioned going to see her. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady who uh, used to write for the Japan Times. Correct. She, uh, some of you who have read Japan Times newspaper articles in the past, there was a monthly column called Backstreet Stories, written by Kit Nagamura, American, married a, a Japanese man. And they were great, great articles. And just, she would go out into a neighborhood and walk around and just whatever she ran into. Slice of life in Tokyo, yeah. Very yeah. much yeah. so. And the thing that just floored me is that's exactly what she's like. She'll mm -hmm. talk to anybody on the street, anybody <laughs> she passes by. If there's a little workshop and the door's open, she'll mm -hmm. stick her head in mm -hmm. and say, hello, mm -hmm. anybody here? And she wants to find out what mm -hmm. they're doing. And Good thing I, we're on the third floor. Well, you can't do that so well, but... Um, and I, I think people are very open to her because they see a foreigner who speaks good Japanese. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I mean, we had great conversations with a bunch while she did, and I kind of stood by mm -hmm. and nodded. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's it was great, and she walked my legs off. We were uh, where were we? We were in Tabata. We were in uh, up around there. But they, she's got an exhibition or something on, right? The show? It just show? finished. Um, last Monday was the last day. And that's, I had gone down there to meet her. Uh, she, there was a surprise. She didn't know I was coming. And, and we didn't know each other that well online. We were friends on Facebook. Uh, but I walked in and introduced myself, and she was you know, thrilled that somebody she knew would come. There, there were people there, which was nice. Um, so we arranged to go out and uh, she's a, a fine photographer and artist and she writes haiku well. Um, so uh, we went out yesterday just doing photography. Well, not yesterday, the day before. <laughs> a photography date. Nice. Yeah, it sort of was. We just walked all over the place and shot what we saw. No, that's, that's no, not, I'm, not, I'm not laughing at you. It no, sounds like fun. It's a, so, a real so. thing. It's in one of the best places in the world to do this. Yeah, you know? And the weather was beautiful. Everywhere you look, yeah. there's something yeah. to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a real thing. It's called a photo walk. Yeah. Um, so we did that, and I still had to process the pictures. <laughs> process the pictures? What's this? So I like, have to develop all my, my <laughs> You have to develop all his SD cards. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Process means hiding the ones that you don't want us to see. Is well, that the idea? That's, <laughs> that's different. Now, it's, here's the thing. Now, I'm a professional photographer. Uh -huh. Posting vaca vacation pictures on Facebook on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, but I mean, you're a professional photographer, but, but of a specific genre. You're really good at like doing the houses and matter. this kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I can't post anything that doesn't look good. <laughs> right. You know, vacation snapshots, no, they have to be okay. artful. Okay, so, okay, okay. So I have to take it seriously. That's a burden you carry as a photographer. It's so a heavy cross to bear, Dave. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, um, well, now that we've said that, let's go back and look at some of those comic books. You know, <laughs> let's yeah, talk really, about it later. <laughs> let's see. Let's look back. Yes, Kid is American. Uh, have you ever entertained the idea of a superhero series of prints, or have you ever done some in the past? Uh, I think uh, other this people is, have kind of trod that ground by now. Superhero, if you're talking about Marvel comics and stuff, that we don't stuff. touch that genre. Okay. Uh, for one thing, neither I nor Jed has a specific interest in it. The copyright issues and stuff are more uh, difficult than the game character things that we've played with. And besides, we're full. We've got a thing that we're still working on. The game character prints is not mined out. We're still mm -hmm. looking forward to making a few more interesting ones in that genre. And we're busy. We're busy, we're busy, we're busy. We're not just shooting for something that's the most popular thing in town. We're trying to make, you know, prints of, of, of value, lasting mm -hmm. value. And the, the fact that the group that we're working with is a fairly narrow, it's restricted, that's not a, what's the same, going to say the same thing, I always say, that's not a bug. 
That's a feature. Uh, I was asking, have you visited that Wisteria place? Um, the only Wisteria place I was playing on was uh, Tamedo Kenjin, which is a Shinto shrine on the east side of the Suda. And uh, because the, the Wisteria were not good over there this year, and because they were early, I didn't even bother. Yeah, I would have just it, been yeah. sad. Yeah. So uh, I did see Wisteria in Aizawakamatsu last week. That's colder up there, so so. Uh, just yeah. a little yeah. bit. It's yeah. not that far north, but it was. Uh, yeah, they were nice. Yeah, I, it, the microphone uh, situation. We had a mic set up for me, but it was causing an echo because we've got them separated by enough. So the microphone is in front of Dave, where it is really important. So I'll just try to talk loud. So I did get to see Wisteria, not where I expected to, but I, I did get a picture, well, a set of pictures uh, several years ago, just before the Wisteria had peaked at oh, Kamedo. At Kamedo, yeah. And, uh, and I got a, a perfect day for it, so it was actually a really, really early morning. I'm important, but not as important as Dave. We're here for Dave. So the pressure's on me now to say something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> As usual. Uh, yes, audio can be on the low end on, in this stream. I, I could pick it up. Uh, KG, you think we need to bring up the volume? Because as soon as I do, Dave's going to bang the Baron, and everybody's going to go, ouch. You know. Well, the limiter should be taken care of that sort of stuff, shouldn't it? Hopefully. Uh, we haven't bumped into the red, so we're okay. I'll, I'll bring up the level just a little bit. Well, no, I can't. I've, I've already maxed. Well, then, on the, on the right, on interface the behind it. Yeah. All right. Let's hold the rears. Totally off-topic question. Uh, have you done anything with those old Shimano blocks from Canada? We're still waiting for the right time. That's obviously a long-time viewer of this stream. No, I haven't. They're sitting in the drawer. And I haven't thought about them now for quite a while. You're bringing it up now. What should I say? What should I think about? There's something else. There's a new factor in the discussion about those blocks, and that's my glaucoma which I hadn't really thought about. Those blocks were set aside for me to do a glorious, massive, wonderful project on very hard wood that maybe I'm not actually going to be able to do, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> they can wait. They can wait. We've got younger people here. Taran-san is one. He may be watching here. He probably doesn't even know about these blocks, and right now he's saying, blocks? Old <laughs> blocks? 40 years ago blocks? What blocks? Yeah. The point to bring up those, we do have people here now, the young man who carved the print we're looking at here today, gloriously detailed, and we have Tanan-san standing by. So it's not like those blocks don't have a future. Who actually will be holding the knife that digs into them? Let's talk about something else. Okay, let's <laughs> talk about something else. <laughs> but yeah, I'd forgotten about them. I, had, I mean, I hadn't forgotten about them, but I haven't thought about them for a long time. They are sitting peacefully, quietly, waiting for their moment in the sun. They're being seasoned. Who was that, by the way? Who would remember that? That is Joefish126. Oh, I see. Not somebody I would, would, would know, actually. Interesting. Sorry. Well, no, the best seasoned blocks in the world are the ones that Dave recovers from Meiji late, uh, late Edo. Mm. I'm not sure what best John, because they really are a bit too dried out sometimes, usually. Yeah. So. You need to slap some of that lanolin on them. <laughs> it could be that simple. I don't know. I don't no, think I, so. I was trying to make a joke. Yeah. Here's your uh, little paper towel for the oil. It's just a tissue. Sugisan has a nice thing set up for it. Mm. 
speaking of wood, my town has cherry trees that I walk past every day, and all I can think of is how many blocks can I make for that if the town has to be it? Well, are they Japanese mountain cherry? All right, Joe Fish, who asked about those blocks, says he's been, he or she has been following you for many years. Hmm. Read basically every single piece of written content Dave has put online. We've heard that before. <laughs> Thank in you. In an effort to improve my own carving skills. <laughs> but do I know who this is? I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't recognize the name. It's okay. No, no problem. No problem. We don't need to dox anybody here. It doesn't matter. Maybe later. The last few days in the shop, they, we've had this sort of conversation. Somebody said, I've been on Twitch, and I say, I've been commenting. They say, yeah, not so much. They tell me their handle name, and I usually don't remember it because it's someone that's only commented once, you right. know, once in a real long while. And there's no way I can remember everybody's handle name. I'm sorry, you know, so. But it's okay. People don't expect me to, to you know, to be silly about that, so. Question for Dave. What do visitors to the shop get to experience? Does the shop do demonstrations of carving, printing, or is it just a look and buy finished prints? These days, the shop is now just a shop. At the moment, we're in between two different eras. If you go back in the pre-pandemic era, the shop was a shop plus uh, an experience corner. People, John himself has done it a number of times, people used to come and make a print on their own with tools and things that we had set up, and we guided the people through it. So it was a printing experience plus a shop. Corona has killed that, along with our lack of resources to be able to do that, and we are going to replace the printing experience with an actual gallery exhibition space with prints taken from our very extensive collection. That's not ready yet due to life, the overwhelming pressure that I'm under right now. So at the moment, it is just, in quotes, just a little shop. With one thing that differs us from every other woodbot print shop in Tokyo, Yamada Shoten, Harashobo, all the other ones, they have prints from the past. We actually have prints, we are, we are still a publisher. So our shop, unlike every other one in town, has brand new, freshly made woodbot prints, both originals and reproductions. And we have the antique corner, the older prints as well. So, kind of a, sorry, too long answer to a short, simple question, I'm sorry. I wouldn't ask you to come and fly to Japan just to see us, but if you're in Japan and you've got an interest in this stuff, we have located ourselves in a very accessible corner of J Tokyo that you're probably going to come to anyway to see yeah. the temples, drop by and say hello. And there's no, we're a, we're a minus 100% pressure sales place. The, the, all the new staff has to come in and learn that. Right. They think that when a customer comes in, we're supposed to grab him and lead him to something and get a chunk of his wallet and stuff. And we yeah. <laughs> Whatever, we don't do that. People come in, walk out, come in, say hello, walk out, come in, say hello, buy a print, walk out. It's totally okay. There's yeah, people come in, put your arm around them and say, hey, I can put you in an 1832 Hokusai <laughs> for the low, low price. Yeah. The biggest single request, people come in and say, can I, they reach for their pocket, then they think it might be a bit impolite to say so. So they reach in their pocket for their phone and they say, is it okay if, 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 and they, they trail off in the dots at which point I say, hey, can we get a picture together? Yeah. And their face goes, oh, yeah, yeah, can we yeah. do that? <laughs> people are so polite. It's so polite. The kind of people that come in here anyway. Generally, so. yeah. Yeah. Of course we take pictures. I don't know how many we take pictures every day. I don't know. Good fun. Now, when printing something like this background, can you judge the amount of pigment by looking at the wood or is it just a matter of... No, I can't. Or? Absolutely. I cannot see anything on the wood. Zero. Even normal printing. It's not just this thin background. There's no way we can tell from looking at the wood. The only way we can tell is, and you've seen me do this, I think. Each one I do. Well, let me just do it. Oh, next batch. Just a minute. Rotate. They're in here somewhere. I've got them in by groups of, I think they're 15 each. I have no idea what's on there other than that something wet is on the wood. Photo sessions are between 11 a.m. and 11 or 2 a.m. Dave is a 20, busy man. 24 hours. What the, yeah, I think you're talking about the other way around. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in line, please. It's good fun. It's good fun. Huh? Yeah. 
I sometimes screw up that thing I just mentioned. People are a little hesitant. <laughs> a while back, whatever, I picked that up. Somebody was a bit hesitant about something. They had their hands in their pockets. So I said, a picture together? And they said, oh, no, 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 why? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, whoops, whoops. Yeah. Egg on somebody's well, face. Don't you so. think something is <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so the deal about the pigment on the block, I'm looking at this one now, mm -hmm. and I've got, you know, I'm, we're doing this, uh, supposedly the original, whatever, supposed to be in front of me, so I can see this for it's each one. Feet. It's So and I can see, and if I, if I get the feeling that we're going a bit too dark, if I start to feel that, then for the next one, I would either not use pigment, in fact, that's the way I'm feeling exactly right now, so we'll put a little bit of nothing but water and nothing but paste, there's lots of pigment residue still in the brush. Question, what happened to microwave blocks? Well, they're not thrown away. They're here, they're here somewhere. Or maybe they got, we're tight for space here. They probably went to Ome for storage. Mm. They wouldn't have been thrown away. We wouldn't do that. And that's on the second key block, remember, the microwave. Uh, we, we, we wore out the first key block. <laughs> Sure, of course, of course, of course, of course. John, let the people know she's going to tap something a little bit here. Light ah, tapping. Okay. It won't, it won't freak the stream out. Okay. I, I won't do anything with the sound. Then. Be prepared. She got sounds going to blow us all away with her own small persuader. She got some. She doesn't only get ducky this now. Kono pers, kono hammer. Just don't miss it. Oh, This is her persuader, oh, so they can see it. So a very. Can you see? Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. No idea. This is her really neat little persuader. I couldn't use this because it's too small and light. Mm -hmm. For a printer, all we need is a tap, 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 tap to take away little bits of wood that should the carver should have taken away. She will never be doing any bang, bang, bang. So it's a nice little light. Can I say this? The lady's hammer. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh, no, you feel it, John. Feel it. Feel yeah, it. It's a nice little hammer. It's a <laughs> okay. I was being polite. <laughs> It's, uh, it, it, it's not just right for uh, using with a 30 millimeter chisel. No, no, no. You wouldn't get anywhere. With you'd, be, you'd destroy your wrist in tap, two tap, minutes. Tap, yeah, tap. yeah, yeah. It's a tap, tap, tapper, yes. So. Wouldn't even get the word persuader, I think. No, no. no. A suggester. But is it a happy little hammer? <laughs> Great to whack random guests. <laughs> The lady in the no. group. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Give it, to me. Give it to me. Give no. it to me. Give it to me. That's all she said. Dave. No. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Okay, but seriously, for a second here, there. Oh, you're you're walking into the weeds. Here. <laughs> To me, that word is a word of respect. Yeah, I I know what you're saying, but as soon as you uh, gender issues, it's a respectful term from someone my age. Yeah, but as soon as you characterize something diminutive as a lady's anything, you're you're walking into the weeds. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> Crafty guy says, "Keep digging that hole there, Dave." I gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my bat and ball. I'm going to take my baron and ball and go home. <laughs> so. Funny thing is, for Dave to go home, he just has to go down downstairs. Flight, uh, <laughs> into the back of that the was next. So, so. As if us ladies could not handle a large hammer. That was Are you poking me? I'm no, going to keep quiet. I'm going to keep quiet. There's no such inference at all. But whatever, I'll keep quiet. Kate from Perth says we handle all hammers. <laughs> Unknown VS13 says I really like the view of people walking about their day in the sun, whereas it's deep into the night for me halfway around the world. Yeah, live from Tokyo. That's remember when it used to be live via satellite. See the Olympics or something, and at the bottom of it would say live via satellite. 
that was back in the 60s. Is this the paper with the new alum ratio? Yes. It is. Okay. Would I ever live in Japan? I, it would be interesting. Um, the thing is, I'm pretty sure that Japan doesn't need or want a 63-year-old freelance photographer. Um, there are plenty of guys here my age uh, who can do what I do. Guys, John? Yeah, guys, because I'm a guy. I'm talking about direct replacement. <laughs> like ladies don't do photography. Oh boy, Dave, you know, from, from down in the hole you dug yourself, I'm sure that looked like an easy target. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy to, uh, to, to just show up here and say I'm going to live here. You, uh, you know, I, the only way we there are, well, two avenues. Uh, that was somebody dropping something. Oh, it's a signboard street. blowing over. It's windy, windy. Oh, okay. The coffee yeah, shop signboard. Windy day today. Um, it's, uh, I would have to either find somebody to employ me and give me a work visa, or I would have to marry a Japanese national or someone with a uh, permanent residence. That's what you And I don't see either of those happening. So that's okay. It's okay to come here and visit. Japan probably doesn't want any 63-year-old West there. You're probably right. Let's see. How do I know David? Well, people ask about Dave's past, and we can just type origin. But for me, I, uh, I started getting interested in woodblock prints around 2002, 2003, something like that. And uh, I started reading up anything I could find online. And back then, the first thing you found was woodblock.com. That's Dave's website, old website, that is a mile wide and, and miles deep. Uh, just anything you wanted to know about woodblock prints, it's there. It's still there. So you should. Uh, Look it up if, if you need background information on how to do woodblock prints, woodblock.com. But not on mobile. Not on your phone. What? Not on mobile. It's chaos. Yeah, not on your phone. Just on a computer. <coughs> but it's, uh, it's a great resource, and everyone should look at it. Uh, so anyway, I noticed that when Dave posted pictures of his prints, they looked good. And I asked him how he shot them, how he lights them. And he emailed back and we did that a couple times. And in 2007, I visited Dave out in Ome uh, before he had this shop in Asakusa. And uh, the rest is history. Now, Dave used to do a, a live stream occasionally from Ome. <laughs> that it was you stream for the, the video and audio coming from Dave, and then a Skype call that was open that you could. Uh, we could do audio all together. So there were a bunch of us talking, Dave would hear over the speaker, and uh, and that was, how long ago would that have been? Like, a long time ago, 15 years ago. But actually I started, John, before that, before you were probably involved, I know, I wasn't streaming in the sense that we do it now. Well, but now I had, it's like every minute or something. I had a live webcam, and, so yeah. with, with a, the picture would be on a page with JavaScript that just refreshed it every right. time a new image came, and my my uh, FTP software uploaded a new image every eight seconds or so, ten seconds. Hmm. So it was a webcam view that seemed static, and then it would move. Right. And then eight seconds later, it wouldn't yeah, I, I probably watched that. I just forgot about it. And there were comments. That would have been 19, 1997, 1998, somewhere on there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that's before my time. I wouldn't have seen that. Before my, 
I don't know, before my time. Too. Well, before I knew anything about you or woodblock prints. You can open source your website. I'm sure you find people that are happy to contribute to. It's yes, not that I know. Kind of so <laughs> I know I get offers. No, I should either what's the word shit or get off the pot or whatever the expression yeah. is. And of course, I know. I, just at the moment, there's just so much else going on. I've got some ideas for it and it, how it should be done. The problem with that thing is that it's not so much one website as it's 20 websites. Because right. I made a big conceptual mistake at the beginning. Well, you put I, everything over the woodblock.com umbrella. Well, not that. It, you, they, they should have been under one domain, but inside woodbuck.com I made a website for the poets with its own front page and its own contact form and its own this and its own that. Okay. And then Suleiman Arms came along and I made a separate website for the Suleiman Arms with different coding, different style sheets, different everything. Wow. And so every one of the print series became its own sub-website done with the technology as technology progressed. Right. And the old ones are still in there with... 1996 like code and it says font size plus three you know and all this kind of stuff in there good old html1 whatever you know it, it was it was cutting edge when it was cutting edge and then it wasn't cutting edge anymore now it's still there you know so yeah. so it just needs an overall one encompassing design for everything i did for 25 years and then put flow the content into the new cms yeah. you know. so i know what i want to do but that's a monumental task well, yeah. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I meant open sourcing the code of the website. Yeah, the code is all over the place, though. Well, using using packaged software. I mean, is is the sort of obvious number one solution, WordPress or something. You know, just yeah, I yeah. really, 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 really want to do it myself. You know. Yeah. It's silly, I know, I know how silly it is, but as a, result, as a result, nothing's getting done, so. Yeah, Tom 1060 says, get AI to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, talk to chatbot, give it one command, and then come back and just upload it all. <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. Make this website look like that. <laughs> looks like I, make this website look like I want it to look like. Yeah, right. Maybe, maybe that's coming down the pipe in another minute or two. Small little note here, the young lady who has been training here, working here, practicing here for the past few days. We met her on the stream the other day. She's probably coming this morning to continue her work. Yesterday afternoon, partway along, she came downstairs to chat with me. And as she came downstairs, she was rubbing her wrist like oh, this. Boy. I looked at her and said, okay, that's it. Put those tools away today. We are done. And she's like, no, I got to do some more. I got to do some more. And we're and the part of the problem is, I talked to her about this, but the desk we've set her up with at the moment, the temporary desk, isn't really all that suited to her, to her, what's the word, to her frame, to her body, to her, to her, her layout, you know, height, arms, legs, whatever. And the desk she's been printing on for the past few days is such that as she prints, she's been leaning forward, and is this visible, John, I guess? Is yes, it? yeah. And she's been printing more like this. Oh, that's not good with her arm up. And it's not been a big difference. We're talking perhaps, I don't know, five degrees or something like this. But she's been printing like this, and she's not a trained practice printer for her this sort of, she's done some, mm -hmm. but this is a new thing to spend a lot of time on. And her wrist has been bent. And yesterday she's saying, Choto itai, it's painful, it's painful. So just, I want to reiterate this. We're straightening this out with her because we're going to fix her bench. But as you watch my next print here, watch the angle of my wrist here. Bit of paste, bit of water. Here, as I'm brushing now with the brush, the angle here is straight, no crink. Sorry for the technical stuff, whatever, people are interested or not, but this is, I think, something really, one of the most important things about everything that we do here, how to do it without destroying your body. We don't understand the words RSI. It doesn't exist here in this culture. And part of the reason is because the way of doing it has over hundreds of years so wonderfully come together with human bodies. The point being here, as I rub this now, it's not 100% straight, but we are very, very close now. 
to being straight. I'm not, to exaggerate, I'm not pushing down through a joint here. This joint is locked. My elbow is locked. I don't know if, John, if you can see what's going on. Get, get the help. You know, this, I'm not even using my, my bicep here. It's flopping. As I rub, my, my bicep is yeah. flopping. It, it comes from right here. And if, John, if you can poke me right, right where my fingers are. There, you're on camera. Oh, okay, on great, the right camera. there. But my point is, if you can feel us, if you, right, right there, right there, dig in, and as I do this, that's the muscle somewhere right. on there that get that hardens up as I do this. So combined with the, the weight, I'm leaning over the thing. It's my upper body weight, locked, 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 and it's the shoulders and muscles behind them that are doing it. And that's why I still, I've got a, a female arm here. You oh, jeez. It doesn't matter. It's like all the girls here. There's no bicep here. And nobody gets this. You have to be a big man to do all this stuff. And this is my point. You don't. Actually, I've screwed that one up now. Look at this. We're talking. I yeah. didn't get the brush brushed out. So. Whatever. The point being, it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. It's in your upper body, leaning into it. She's laughing at me now. Yeah, you? so is the chat. Okay, I don't <laughs> care. I really, really, really don't care. I'm sorry. Important, important point. You're talking to a guy who has nobody but ladies working for him. The only workshop in town that hires pretty much only women and gives them their head to go for it. So it's not the, walk, the talk to talk, it's the walk to walk. And the good KP says she's planning the arm wrestle the next time she goes. And I would lose. <laughs> if she is into all that hammering that she's talking about, then she's got some biceps, probably. I don't. That's funny. If I spent more time as a carver, actually, doing that with yeah. my left hand, I would probably have more biceps, because that is that physical, actually, uh, upper arm work. done. So I've got to flip over my sheet. What I've got here is there's two sheets of moistened newsprint in between every 30 sheets of, is it 30? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No, it's 18. 18 sheets of paper, printing paper, then newsprint. Says Dave would win on the left, I would win on the right, almost certainly. Oh, God, for left handed or right handed. How, how, how do you do an arm wrestling when one person is left handed and one person is right handed? What's the normal rule? Yeah, that's a good question. The latest fitness fad P90X and CrossFit are out, print clock carving is in. <laughs> I, whatever, it's a joke, but the, it's an. Uh, this job that we're doing here is not one that requires a great amount of physical strength. Yeah. There's sort of an interesting point there, you know, people might look at it and feel that it is, but it really isn't. It's the golf thing, you know, there was, we've I've probably talked about it any number of times on a stream, you know, uh, some, this is so far back in my memory now that I don't even remember who it was or where it was. The conversation was there, it was in a shop, I think upstairs on the second floor, and We'd been talking about this because our printers on the second floor used to be visible. The printers were in the back room on the second floor. So yeah, sometimes customers yeah. come in could see the printers. So at some one of those days, the conversation came around about this strength, and someone had said something, wow, they must be really strong. And I'd said, no. And you know, the conversation was that kind of conversation. And the way I had tried to describe it was that it isn't a question of physical power, push, push, push. It's a question of more finesse or something. And the guy was a golfer. We've told this story, right? Mm -hmm. I and mean, he did the actual demonstration for me. 
he stood up there on the thing and he said, here's the, the, the big men come from the GIs come to, to do the golfing and they stand there and they go, yeah, bang, and the golf goes, the ball goes like two meters. Right. Then he stands up and he made this gesture, swing, I can't do it, I'm not a golfer, but you get the idea, swing, wait, and then move, and then swoon, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing to do with muscles and the ball goes a million miles. And I think that's a super... Mm. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's technique, it's not... Uh, it's well, it, it's all technique, but it's not the application of strength. If you had some sort of device to measure how many energies of, of joules of energy were being put into it. Mm. I guess I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a, I can't, there's no data, this is anecdotal, but it's not about the power or the energy that goes into it. It's about using the tools. This is actually, that's another thing. One of the old printers did use this phrase to me years ago. He said, so you're pushing the Baron around. He says, stand back, make the Baron do the work. You're just the guide. Mm. This is the tool that's doing the work. You get the right one, the right paper, the right moisture. Your job is just to tell it where to go. This tool will do the work for you. She's laughing at me, but it's true. She knows what we're talking about. You know. And maybe we can't do it well. She's not doing it well. I'm not doing it well. But the goal is the tools do the work. You're just sort of guiding them. And it's the, the golf club example, which we can all see and feel in here. You know, the mm. guy swooping it back, gently swooping, so bang, not breaking a sweat, and the ball goes a million miles. You know? What did I do? I don't even know what I'm doing here. Did I put stuff on the block? is often more precision and dexterity than throwing your weight into it. Yeah. But what about when you're removing a lot of wood? You know, when wood does have to be removed, when work does have to be done. Well, Langstrand says the energy put into the golf ball would by definition be higher, that's why it goes far. But it's because of the efficiency of transfer from muscle to ball, which is technique. Oh, okay. Now, never golf, but I would pause it. I mean, that golf head, the golf club is really heavy. No, and I think it's not. the head, the head, the head, the head of the club. I mean, it's not. <laughs> it's it's it's. it's got, he's got to wait, and yeah, then the little point little. being is, you want to get that thing moving as fast as possible at that point of contact. Because right, that's where the energy goes to the ball, right? Right. The weight of the club plus the speed, velocity. I'm sure not sure my physics terms here. And then you're the guy that did it, but you lifted it. And then you started it off on a journey, and the weight of that thing going around that circle, right? It's not pushing the ball. It's not pushing the ball, it's swinging the club and having the ball in the way. No, there's, uh, there are guys uh, who are big and brawny and hit the ball a mile, and there are guys who are you know, mm. built more like you or me mm. and can still hit the ball mm. a long way, maybe not as far as the, the big brawny guys but close to it. Let's see, we're getting a full analysis of golf swings. Mm -hmm, okay, whatever. Yeah. And, and I said I'm not a golfer, but the point being, overexertion and trying to do it grrr, isn't yeah. the way to do it. That's, that's all, the, the anecdotal story, that's all. I looked at golf for a while in my 20s, and uh, my mother bought, or it, she used to uh, volunteer at the library, and a book came through, Arnold Palmer, you know, how to, how to swing a golf club. And I, I read it, and his thing was, think of from the top of your head to the bottom of your tailbone, that's an axle, and everything else is just getting the axle to turn. And that made sense to me, it actually worked. Uh, now, 
abnormal C01 says, through the thump, wood block printing was the mechanism for, de for, for debating life's mysteries. Of course it is. <laughs> tell me of about it. it. Tell me about it. So, so. <laughs> it's a metaphor for life, my friend. I don't know about that. <laughs> what <That's going> <laughs> is Dave working on today? Good chance to refresh <coughs> the, uh, the topic. We're doing uh, another batch of the second print in this year's subscription series, Hokusai Reborn. This is the second one. It turns out we're short. We've taken more subscriptions on hand than we actually had prints available for. So a few weeks ago, I did a batch of the first print in the series, and now I'm doing a batch of the second print in the series. And the third print is actually, it's this month's print, so production there is on the way, not on my desk here. And the blocks arrived yesterday for the third print in the Kyoto Journey series. The full set of blocks came back from Kawasaki-san. I should have actually brought them upstairs so we could maybe show them, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll put them on the next stream because they will be beside the bench downstairs. So. What's today? What day is it today? Saturday, sure. So next stream is Monday. Yeah. So I can show those blocks on Monday. And the printers will now. Ishikawa-san is doing another job now. But once she's finished this, she'll be probably, I guess, doing test printing on the Kyoto Journey number three. Excellent. How many are you printing today? Uh, not that many. I have uh, nine times six. Uh, Fifty-four. Hey. No, that's wrong. It's more than that. Just a minute. There are eight, 18 times 3. There must be more in the basket. It's supposed to be 64. I thought it was, that's but that's 99. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Around 60 plus. There you have it. I must have miscounted when I did the moisture yesterday because there's only 18 in that first group. I thought I had three even groups. Don't, don't know. Don't know. So with the pressing yesterday and with this impression now, this paper is as flat and as soft and as smooth as it's ever going to be, ready for the key block. How long am I there? I will be here until May 16th. I, uh, I took a lot of time off to come over this time around. Here meaning being in Japan, I mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's what they're asking. Uh, how long are you there? So I'm I'm here until at least oh, I guess nine thirty. <laughs> You're heading for Shikoku next? Is that when? That's uh, tomorrow. I leave for Shikoku. I'll be there for a week. You're gonna do the big pilgrimage, are you? <laughs> All eighty-eight in, in a week. No, I uh, I'll be in Takamatsu, Kochi, and uh, and uh, Matsuyama. How are you getting there? Flying down or train? Flying down and back. To? Flying to Takamatsu, mm -hmm. flying back from Matsu Yana. These are tickets that you bought a long, long, long time ago? Yeah, yeah. You know, back when the, when the dollar was peaking against the yen. Mm -hmm. I haven't Not checked it in a while. It wasn't so much what price, it was about gold to make reservations, you know. Well, it was, uh, I, I, they were cheap flights. They were, I think uh, less than 150 each way. Eighty temples in one week. No, we were making a little joke there. That would be a little much. That's uh, one of those pilgrimages is that a lot of people will start and they'll go down, they'll do a few on a weekend, and then they'll go back another time and continue to do it in pieces. Uh, I won't be, I'll probably see some of the temples that are on the circuit, but I certainly won't be making the circuit myself.
the people that set that up centuries ago. Magnificent PR, my God. Yeah? Yeah, genius PR. So was it the, the, the railroads or? The no, it's long before that. No, no, way, way, way before that. Way, oh, okay. Way. If it was railroads, they'd be, you know, there aren't any railroads there. Well, if there, there weren't any railroads going there until pretty recently. Comparatively speaking. Well, it is 9 o'clock on a Saturday. Oh, yeah. look at that, bingo. We got was 8.59.59. Oh, one second. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Thanks for playing. See you next week. <laughs> no prize money awarded this week. That's right. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but the bots have a timeout, right? So the first person that hits it, if he's a bit early, even if the next person oh, was actually funny. right on, it doesn't go through, right? We, we had one at 8.59.56 and one at 8.59.59. So what's the timeout time? Three seconds or something? I don't know. Or oh, maybe there's two bots. So are they both? Maybe they're on separate. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, one yeah. was night bot, one yeah. was the other one. Yeah. But that's going to be the mistake. Somebody's always going to hit a bit early, and that would lock out the next person, even right. if the next person was actually exactly right. So the early bird locks everybody else out. <laughs> it can't be helped. <laughs> or we can turn off the. Uh, Time out for a oh, couple of seconds, in, and then yeah. hundred people would try the same yeah. thing. So yeah, we need a bot to trigger the bot. There's only one time bot. So I see. So it's not doubled up like some of the chat commands. Okay. Right. Okay. No, uh, that we're fine. Fine with that. Just I was just. Yeah, yeah. in the stream you show. You can hear instantly that it's a fair phone. Even before you can hear the words, even before you can hear the sound. Mm. Yeah, usually from the street if it's that loud it's either a Japanese person with a megaphone or a foreigner. <laughs> Speaking like this. <laughs> I, I always told Dave he needs to do a, a 36 views <coughs> of Asaksa or, or, uh, or you know, however many views of... Is that a question for me or for you? Photography or prints? Are we well, talking about it, Tom asked me, but I, yeah. I, I've always said, you know, 36 views of, mod, of the modern capital or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's what Tsuchimochi-san has done or is trying to do. He's got a couple of books out like that. Mm -hmm. the, the designer working with Miyakudori. We have one of their prints, Ginza in the Rain. Right. But he's done, he's got a book published on his take on modern views of Tokyo, which he thinks is done in an ukiyo-e slash shinhanga style. And these are paintings or? Uh, illustrations. Oh, okay. But he wants them all to be prints, but not going to happen for me. But, okay. but it's out there, Tsuchimochi, I know, Shinji Tsuchimochi is the guy's name. And that's his thing, modern views of Tokyo, uh, riffing on or, or as, as an outgrowth of the, the traditional ukiyo-e such views. And, right. and I'm sure he's not the only one, it's a, it's a theme. 
This is going well today, John. Sound? It's coming all right. Paper smooth. Color is what it is. Yeah, no, you, you're in the groove pretty much. It's good to have the uh, the chat on the screen behind you. Fewer distractions. Mm Just putting a gray background on, yes. Would this block be able to be recycled later on and used to carve another print? I suppose it could be, but it's part of this block set for now. Yeah, it's permanently done for now. There's no way we're going to use this again. This is not a solid piece of wood. This is a thin cherry layer on top of plywood. And I could carve a picture into that because it's on, but, but no, no, that's not how we, not how we do it. Fly fish for funds. Just realized no max masks today. Part of that is because I walked out of the hotel without my mask on. <laughs> but I showed up and no one else was wearing one either, so. We're living dangerously. Yeah. I will be masked up in the shop this afternoon. The, s the staff still is. And now, actually, it, there's been quite a sea change in the past week or so. Almost none of the visitors now downstairs have masks on. Yeah. Almost none. It's, it's, you know, it seems to be time. I'm, I'm sort of okay with that in quotes, but actually when you look at the stats, there are still a couple of dozen people every day, every day of the week, dying in Japan from this virus still. And, uh, there's the stats I don't have. I didn't look it up the last couple of days. But, uh, so this has become the new normal. It's pretty clear now. It's become the new normal. And, uh, I'm not looking forward to it. It will hit me at one point, obviously, because we're being less and less careful with masks. And it will hit me one day. I'm vaccinated, so presumably I'm not going to die. But how far down is it going to take me? I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, the same as everybody else. You just how how much can you do? How far can you carry this thing? At what point do you just say, let's just get on with life? Just in, in the time I've been here, it's been a couple of Yes, weeks you've now. noticed a big change. I have yes, noticed yes, that people are yes. you know, on the trains when I got here, and this was Friday the 21st mm. of April, I would say... 100%. On, on the trains, about 90%. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, you've maybe been on more trains than I do. I would have said, you just don't get on the train because people are going to shun you if you don't have a mask. This is, a, you know, a month or so ago. Yeah. But well, now it's... Now it's closer to half and half. Well, I suspect if you were on a rush hour train, you're going to see uh, probably a few more. Yeah. Our sign outside the shop now says "masks optional," the one that the customers see uh, when they come in. So, so there's no obligation for customers anymore. The staff is still, by their own choice, by our own choice, the staff is masked up and doesn't seem to be bothering anybody. I had one day uh, in the first week I was here that I forgot I walked out of the uh, hotel without a mask and I felt self-conscious enough about mm -hmm. it that I immediately went to a convenience store, bought masks, mm -hmm. put one on. Uh, this morning mm -hmm. I got as far as the corner down the street and realized I had not put a mask on I just said, just kept going, ah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's a slow change, even though it, it's only been a couple of weeks. But 
you know, it, now that I look at it, yes, it does seem like people are really starting to do without. Well, remember to the the change in the overall rule at the airport: no vaccination sure. checks anymore. It was originally scheduled for this next weekend. They pushed it back a week yeah. because yeah. of the Golden Week holiday. So, so now it's officially free for all. Yes. Question, is there any other reason one should learn to carve without rotating the block aside from speed? If I do not mind being slow, is it okay? If you're trying to carve traditional ukiyo-e type prints, ones with lots of fine lines and lots of detail, there is a difference. The block carved that way is much more printable for super fine lines. Is Taranta? He's not on the, on the screen. He can I have not seen him in the chat. It's a long, long, complex answer that we're really still actually not quite clear about. I can just touch it for a few seconds. I don't have a knife, whatever. When you rotate, you end up having the angles on the lines all pretty much the same because you rotate, rotate your 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 knife stays at pretty much the same angle. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. You've got the standard angle and you rotate the block so the wood fits it. So the finished block has all the angles the same. It's printable. Your brush runs up, up the lines, leaving pigment on the top. When you carve without rotating the block, because you've got your hand tilted strongly and straight and strongly and round, the angles of the, the side of the mountains that are the leftover lines vary all over the place. The ones generally over there are slow, low slopes because that's how you hold your hand. The ones in front of you on this side of the lines are generally steeper slopes because you can't carve like this. You know, it's the angle of your, your, your body geometry. So the, the block when it's finished has varied angles, which means it's easy to print one way running up the slopes and it's more difficult to move your brush the other way where the slopes are steep. And this can work to your advantage when the lines are super thin you want to run up the slope the slow way and your brush flicks off the top, not leaving pigment on the top. I don't know if that's an understandable explanation. It needs to be demonstrated and drawn and, and, and pictured. But that was the question. Is there a difference other than speed? And at super top quality, top fine, ultra top level work, yes. I don't do it that way. Taransan is working on that. He's studying to do it the normal way, not moving the block. Question. Silence falls. <laughs> right. uh, we had a question how to care for prints. Just received one of Dave's prints. Any suggestions how to care for it? Well, it shouldn't live in the plastic. Take it out of the plastic bag. But having said that, if the environment you're going to put it into is worse than that, then it should perhaps stay in plastic. You want airflow. You don't want it to be stuck all the time with no air movement. If your environment is damp, that's a killer. Let the thing expose. Let the thing get exposed to air as long as it's not, you know, dirty and dusty. The paradox here is that the paper, the print you just got is made of beautiful mulberry that will last 200 years. Not this, but I'm, I'm saying as an example. And yet whatever paper you use to wrap it is not going to last 200 years. Even if it's nominally acid-free paper, it's just simply modern pulp cellulose paper. So it's like, the, the, we've talked about this, the diffusion plasma boys have this problem. They've got this plasma and nothing on the planet will hold it because it's all weaker than the plasma. And they do it by magnets, so we, we can't store our prints in a nitrogen environment held up by no, magnets. So, so, magnets, yes. so the only answer is you've got to do it in acid-free paper and then change that out every, <laughs> whatever, every generation or something. I don't know. There's no easy answer. Right. We have uh, one person framed his in a frame that has UV re resistant glass. Which will help uh, to some extent. Oh, it's no still... Bit. It's still light. It will still fade over time. The pigments we use these days for all of our modern prints are really quite strong 
they're quote unquote light fast, and the quotes really have a meaning there because none of them are light fast. Yeah. Yes. We are seconds away from showing. Oh, soka, soka, soka. Okay, well, I've got this block ready. Hang on a sec. We do have a show and tell prepared. The one that I was going to do at the end of the sizing the other day, but didn't get to. He's just been fired. He doesn't know yeah, yet. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, I uh, I plan to be back on uh, Monday the fifteenth. He's the guy wants to know so he cannot be here. That's, that's, that's right. Ideas. Fair warning. Uh, I, I plan to be back on Monday the fifteenth. That's a uh, that's going to be a good day. That's sumo day, Michelle. That is sumo day. John has picked up a pair of tickets to sumo. He gave up asking my permission and hinting and whatever. Uh, I, I can't remember. No, I'm not, I'm not dissing you here. I'm, I'm, I'm praising you. John just made this happen where I was ambivalent. John made it happen and picked up a couple of tickets, and he and I are going to see sumo yes. on Monday afternoon, evening, slash afternoon, afternoon slash evening. Afternoon into, yep. uh, I guess they finished by 6 o'clock, yep, right? Yep, yep. In time for the news. And the one thing I'm a little leery about is not seeing sumo. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. He keeps talking about food, and I don't think I can handle the food plan that no, might we, be on the table. So uh, I we don't, don't have to eat chunk of that. But I never She's have. Giggling. Somebody else is giggling here. Well, I never <laughs> so have, and at some point I should. Okay. You know. Do they have a child menu? <laughs> I don't know, Dave. Maybe they have a ladies' man. I, gee, I don't know. I thought I, I just thought for some reason I better not say that. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, right. I, I gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, what do we need to do about camera movement, John Sam? Well, uh, I think I will. I think we have some flex here. Get this yeah, audio we'll thing get... out of the way. No connection. Okay. And I think if you could, well. But we are using that. Yes, but it's as long as it's not. Okay. So if you pull it there, yeah, and if you I will do the thing, do it. Tell you what, let's make more feet. <laughs> no, bottom one, top one, top. One. It's just more stable. The bottom ones are the right. last, last resort. Yeah, ones. that's pretty much how I work. Yeah, and the rest is up to you. And we're going to work here. Maybe if I can get a, a board, uh, which I should have thought about. Well, I'll tell you what, I might, I might just do this. If we do it there, it's not uh, your spot, yeah, so you nice. can just right next to the microphone, which you're going to bang every few seconds. Naturally. Okay, these aren't the prints we're going to look at. They are the introduction to the prints we're going to look at. They came across my desk a couple of weeks ago as being prints that are destined for the flea market. I'm not going to sit here and promo them. This will be, a, you know, click here to buy this two weeks from now. That's irrelevant to the discussion today. They were going into the flea market, and what Nabisan put them on my desk. She wants comments about condition and price and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just sort of, it's not a random batch of prints. It's a group of prints that came from the Adachi company. This would be maybe the 1960s, somewhere around there. And it's unusual in that most of them are not foxed. When we get Adachi prints from the 60s, they've been put in such terrible uh, packaging that a lot of them are foxed and sometimes moldy. But over and above that, she had flagged them for me because, can you maybe, if I stay stable for a minute, John, can yeah. you come with my finger zooming in here? Yes. And are we actually visible? Are you seeing the computer at the same time? I'm right on it. Okay. The point being, she thought this one looked like it might be a really, really nicely done group of Adachi prints in the sense of the hairlines were nicely carved. Look at this. We have a great fade out at the end of the hair. We have clean, sharp hair. 
very, very nicely done. The one like this where they come into the ear, which is extremely difficult. When you're carving hair just coming out, soup, soup, you're okay, you're easy to go. But when you can't go soup because the ear is in the way, it's a different story. Anyway, long story short, she thought these were really nice and she said, Dave, what kind of price should these be at in the shop? And that made me think again to something that another customer had asked about the other day. Let me put this aside for a moment and pull up three or four prints that are actually in the shop. I pulled these. I'm going to move because of that, John. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Because not only what Nabisan asked me about this, a customer the other day looked at two similar prints. One was something four or five thousand, one was seven, eight, nine thousand, and said, Why are these two prints, which look pretty much the same, why are they different prices? And that gives me a chance then to wrap up some of these things, uh, to tie some of these things together. Let me try and find perhaps the two most perfect examples to show this. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this. Are we in on the hair? Is it reflection okay? No, we're good. We're good. Okay, look what we've got here. There's more than one block. The hair has gray undertone, and then there's a darker hairline over top of it. And I've picked a really sort of not so nice example here because you can see the overline hairs all have a big black blob at the end of them. This is not very nicely done. It could be that the carver left a, left a, a funny end on the hairs or the printer just pressed too hard. But look at this and let's see if I can find a side by side. Okay, here we go. We have the same kind of picture it's a faint one underneath and a darker one on top, and look at this. The faint one comes out and becomes invisible. The darker one comes on top. They match one by one. The top darker one becomes smooth and faint and invisible. Completely different effect. I'm pointing this out to the customer downstairs. That's the reason this one is priced higher than the other one. When you go into a shop like this, it's not just random stuff. There are, I was going to say junk and treasures. Hopefully there's not too much junk in a shop like ours, but we buy these things in batches and they come to us in all different manner of conditions and shapes and situations. And we look at them and grade them. Try and find another. Okay, here's another one that's a bit more in between. The bottom light gray one has been printed light gray. The top one on top, look at this, the hairs are a little bit too long, the guy has come down a bit too far with the black pigment, maybe he could have wiped it off a little bit better with his finger, a little bit more time and trouble, and it would have been the same kind of effect that we saw in the previous print. And this is uh, just, it, you can just see it so easily, oh look at this one, another nice, nice, nice one, look at this. We've got two kinds of carving here, the straight normal hair carving, Two blocks again, light and dark, and then we have what's called yaege. I don't know what the term means. Ishikasan wakarimasu ka? Wakaranai. That came back pretty quick. Wakaranai. I don't know. Don't ask me. Don't bother me. It's okay. It's okay. So, 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 so. And the, the style again, where the hairs, instead of coming straight out, where they all curve up and meet the one above. It's much, much, much more difficult to carve because the knife can't come out and it's much, much, much more difficult to print. When you're printing this sort of stuff, your brush at the final stroke comes off and wipes away crap that's inside the hairs. When it's like this, your brush can't go soup because nothing comes off the end. So you've got to sort of brush your pigment up first and then try and say, what am I going to do here? Maybe I can dab, dab, dab and try and get rid of any crap that's in there. This guy has done a pretty nice job. I prepared one a minute ago. Where is it? Let me try and find it. Here we are. Look at this. Nowhere near as attractive. And look at this up in the front. Look at this. Yeah. Night and day. Way too much pressure. Too thick on the top of the eye. Too thick and too black here. Too much pigment. Didn't rub it out. Compared to the previous one, it's a disaster. So right now they're all asking, why is this in the shop? 
it's a, it's a thing. When I buy these prints, I buy them in batches. I cannot reject every print that is not perfect. What do I do? If we look at this one even more carefully, actually look at this, it's got foxing spots. Throw it away. If I threw away every print that didn't match the, the, pub, the standards that we are choosing ourselves to publish by for the new prints, there would be nothing left in the flea market. I'm not sure if I'm making a fool of myself by saying this, but we get these old prints in. They are what they are. They're prints made by the 1960s, 70s, 80s era craftsmen. And you really, if you've got an eye for it, you go through them and you think, oh, 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 look at this, here I am. And you can find yourself a nice little bargain or not. I can't throw away everything that doesn't match our current standards of publication. And we talk about this in the shop. I did the guy who'd asked. I pulled up, pulled up five or six or seven, and he said, oh my God, I'm not having that one. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. The next person may have that one because it's much, much, much cheaper. So I don't know if I should have talked about this or if I should show this or not. What I would like to think is, is working is that people who are in the shop sort of know what they're looking at, know what's good, know what's bad, you know, try and be able to, to have some sense themselves of being able to pick through these prints. What else? I, I picked an easy visible example by talking about these hairs, but let's just look at some other parts of these prints. Johnson, can we ask to scroll down here a little bit to this kimono? This purple pattern here, yeah. I think everybody can see there's horizontal striations in here. This is not wood grain. The wood grain always on a print like this would be something that's vertical. It would go top to bottom. These are horizontal striations and you saw me do that already for the past hour. I put my pigment on the block, then I ended up going sa 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 sa. And if I don't do sa sa carefully enough, or if my brush is too hard, or if there's too much paste on the block, that sa sa leaves streaks. On goes the paper, on comes the baron, and the streaks are visible in the finished print. It's not a class work. We see it again here. If the camera can come up, we see the same thing. There are slight striations here. And it's no surprise, we've also got a tiny bit of misregistration. And this is the print that has the clumsily printed hair. It goes together. Okay, put those aside. Let's go back to that batch that I put on the table at the beginning. And as I said, she picked this out for me because she thought, Dave, we have some really, really, really nice ones here. What do you think about this? So let's have a look. In the last few minutes here, let's poke through. And I'm just, I haven't seen them all really carefully, haven't inspected them all, but I've seen enough to know that she has found a really gem. Beautiful taste, beautiful, beautiful taste. To carve this, three women. Rich color, this is made with the yellow, the old yellow that we can't buy anymore. The, the, the arsenic stuff, right. you know? not just there, so other stuff mixed in. Can we see it? Can we see the uh, embossing? Yes, And of course, I don't know the angle here, the background. Yeah, we're seeing it. This one's not quite as nice. Bit of bit of mix in here. The eye is weak. He's been a bit too weak on the on the key block. The nose isn't quite printed well. The eye is a bit weak. And look at the color here. Whoa, 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 whoa. No way. Modeled. This is not A rank. Reasonable, good strong nose, eyes, maybe a bit too much black on the top one. But again, he's put black on there to make sure he gets a good rich black in the hair. This is nice. Not sure about this. I don't have an original to compare, but the eyes look a bit funny here. Hair carving seems nice, a bit weak on the black. Look at this. You can see lines going through where it should be just transparent. This is different. 
this looks at first glance like terrible, awful, rough printing. It's not. This is printing in imitation of a transparent summer kimono. I think the stuff would be called sha. Ishikawa san would that be? Um, sha. Sha. Okay, good. A summer kimono that's really super thin, uh, trans transparent uh, fabric. And he's done a very nice job on the shiborizome, all the dots inside. It's good, one number pulled this out, very nice, very nice. This is Kiyonaga. The sort of paradox about some of these is in the museums, they have originals of a Kiyonaga print still left, and it would be, one, really rare for the museum to have an absolutely finely printed copy, because they would have a random copy that just survived. And being so old now, it would be 200 years old, it would be faded, beaten up. So to have a nice, beautifully made, beautifully carved copy from the 1960s, this is no, uh, the museums don't look at these stuff, but I think they're missing a beat. This actually is more of a beautiful object than the original itself. Neat and clean. Beautiful. And he 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 look at this. Mm, plus minus, you know, it's nice, there's no globs of pigment left inside here. But we really I don't know how closely we can get here, John, I don't know. You can see the lines don't all flow as smoothly as they could flow. We can see the little dot 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 dot. The, the lines are broken. If I move my finger up just a sec so that I can compare with the other one. This one left every line. You can see the lines as lines, not as broken pieces. And this guy, the lines are broken. Apprentice maybe? No idea. I haven't seen this. Look at this. We have the little girl here. And what do we have on her cheek? Big lump of chili. Yeah. Just send it out. Don't worry. We struggle with this all the time. And the evidence is in front of us all the time. Don't overthink it. The paper is what it is. Even when there's a lump of chili on a woman's face, send it out. <gasps> I still can't do that. But they did. Another one again, transparent kimono. Let's finish off with this one, because this actually is a nice one. A couple of things. Can we go up to the top, John Sam? Yeah. Up, up, up. Here we go. Quite nicely done. It's a bit too bad, we can see the difference, we can see the black, it would be best if, if it disappeared into nothing, but it is nicely done. And then down here, this is a terror for a carver. Not only thin, but long, 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 thin, almost parallel. It's easy enough to carve short little thin hairs, but when they become this long, this is no piece of cake at all, absolutely not at all. And finally here, look at this. I can't even see them anymore. There's maybe three or four per millimeter. I don't know. This is a Dachi the 60s. So the guy who would have carved these, his name is Ogura Hambe. And it's a bit difficult to understand who we're talking about because it's one of those cases like our papermaker, Iwano Ichibe, where they use the same name. As the older guy dies, the son comes up and takes over the same name. So to say that this was carved by Ogura Hambe doesn't actually tell us which one of those three men that I know that it could have been. Doesn't much matter, I guess, whatever. Mm. 
Okay, I think we are going to leave it there. We've run a bit over time. Today is Monday morning. I'll be long finished. Today's Saturday. Morning. Oh, it's Saturday. Saturday. Nanda. Yeah, that's right. Why does it feel like... Because we've had the last three days seem like a weekend. That's it. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, it's Saturday morning then. In that case, said I may be printing again on Monday. I'm going to be busy in the shop today and tomorrow. This print has five impressions. So now that I think about it, yeah, I'll be back here again Monday morning with another impression on these blocks. And then by Thursday, I'll be doing something else. All right, then. I think they can't see you because you're standing up, but... Uh, they can see me all the way up to about here. Okay, well, if you can <laughs> sit down and sign off, because I can't reach the computer. You got some? I'm going to yeah. sign off. Hi. Goodbye to everybody. Thanks very much. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, Kumi, before we sign off... Before we sign off... You go back, back to work. Go back to work. Go back to work. Turn the camera and look at her oh, painting. That's okay. Just for one second, you got some. Don't panic. Don't panic. centered where you are. Perfect. So you have the little metal thing to keep the pigment. It's a spoon, right? A spoon to keep the pigment off the registration marks. Very nice. Yes. Soft, soft. Look at this spoon over the key mark. Perfect. You just got something. You just keep going. Just ignore us. <laughs> Second Baron. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The two Baron trick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Stronger Baron for the outside lines. If she want a bit more pressure. And there must be something in the middle here that's very soft. She doesn't want quite so much strength. Not sure if she's going to show it to us. Might be more stuff. Just go ahead, each cousin. Ignore us. The print she's making is this one. It's one of the prints from the Japan Journey series. Back then, we're still taking subscriptions. Mm -hmm. so still has it, so. I think there we go. Let's leave it. Okay, let's sign off. She's embarrassed about us watching her, so it's okay. Right. Okay, gang, thanks very much. John Sam's going to press the button. You should go, Sam, we can see you now. Okay, bye bye. Right, see you now. Okay.